for this podcast, we're proud to partner with Zurich Life and Investments. As one of the last true independent life insurers, Zurich has always believed in the value of advice and the professionals who provide it. They continue to invest in programs such as this one that are designed to strengthen the health and reputation of the advice profession. They're excited about the chance to partner with us, XY Advisor, to help shape the future direction of advice and help make it more accessible to more Australians. To find out more or to check out some of the latest advisor support tools, visit the website or ask your Zurich BDM. We all know education is one of the biggest things in the industry at the moment. It's why we've created the XY Advisor platform. It allows advisors to do short four-week courses. And what we're really keen to do is to get as many awesome content providers in there. So if you're an advisor or a service provider who have put together an awesome solution which can affect change in the way an advisor does their job on a Monday morning, please do put together an application for us at www.xyadvisor.com. Marcus Aurelius, what's happening, my man? I'm here for Cat Fancy Magazine's podcast, a a weekly (laughs) podcast series on... Meow FM. <laughs> Meow FM. Turn the volume, turn the knob up to 11 and rip the knob off. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so speaking of uh, ripping the knobs off, um, Mordor. Segways. Mordor. Like Mordor. How's, yeah. how's, how's the business going, mate? Mate, Mordor Wealth. Um, <laughs> so the idea was originally to really niche down on the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit fans. And yes. um, That's why I, I, didn't realize that, I didn't realize that <laughs> I didn't realize that there were only one of you out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for the uninitiated, um, Mirador, obviously, wealth, yep. that, that is the correct pronunciation. Um, and mate, uh, we, we met some years ago now, actually all three of us. Yeah, it would have been what, six? Yeah, it Six, feels like decades. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At, at AMP Horizons. We haven't aged a day, I will say. No. Seven years we have. <laughs> <laughs> it's Clayton's birthday today. I, I hear. Yes. He's 37. Yes, yes. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> 35. Sorry. Gosh. I mean, I feel bad enough as it is. <laughs> you drink. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's been happening, man? <clears throat> Just living the dream, day by day, <laughs> minute by minute. Well, it's more brighter finance now, isn't it? It really is. Um, so I um, so f- for those listening that have never heard of me, which will be all of you, um, <laughs> I originally set up a uh, set up a, an advice business from scratch, and um, after going through for a couple of years, also was was finding that I was delivering a lot of mortgage leads to uh, to mortgage brokers, and, and thought, well. You know, I, I've been banking before. How easy would this be to get into? Mm. So, um, yeah, I started Brighter Finance as a mortgage um, broken business maybe three years ago. Yeah, four wow. Years ago now. Um, and that would be 95% of the business at this point. Wow. Yeah, yeah, right. So I very rarely do advice. I've got existing clients, but all the... Um, the new inquiries at the moment, um, I'm, I'm sending on those to other advisors just yeah, because wow. it's just what I'm focusing on. Cool. Well, I mean, it makes sense, right? Because you were at Macquarie, Macquarie, then, then A&P. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, so I've been predominantly doing mortgage broking for a couple of years now. Yeah, wow. H- how do you find it compared with the other, the financial services side of things? Um, I'd say to those that are not doing both, um, that the amount of time it takes for clients to come back to you for an inquiry that's related to a loan application is about, you know, 5% of the time it takes them to come back to you from a question. Hey, wait, so people are more motivated to buy a home than they are to complete a trauma policy? Get out of town. town. Cancel the whole thing. Absolutely shocking. Lies. and I'm as I'm as shocked as you are because <laughs> when I used to see 25 year olds and <laughs> explain to them the deep need for un, for proper underwritten insurance as a single non-dependent unencumbered, <laughs> unencumbered individual, 
Um, unencumbered, uninterested. Uninterested. You know, the fact that, <laughs> they, didn't get back to, the fact that they didn't get back to me in a month was just mind-boggling. Yeah. So, Travis, yeah. After a lot of drinking of um, cask wine, I, I just decided <laughs> that there had to be a better, better way of doing things. Yeah, so... Um, you know, so certainly I, I still think there's a, a huge role for advisors to play. It just at the moment, um, it's just not where I'm focusing my time. Fair enough. And uh, so you're a married man. I last, am. La- last I few am. years. I know. Mm-hmm. She signed mm-hmm. up without without being under duress. It wasn't even shotgun. <laughs> and, and my mother's from Alabama. We do shotgun weddings. I mean, <laughs> so the the first most important thing was making sure that she wasn't my cousin. And then after we got through that, Wait, I that was, she wasn't your cousin. Wow. <laughs> you know, there's got to be at least two part. degrees of separation. I thought I thought the closer the better. Keep it well, within the family. Isn't that the yeah. Alabama thing? All my cousins were male, and that's definitely not the Alabama <laughs> thing. It's an additional <laughs> hurdle a, to yeah, climb. Like, I mean, I don't know how they would just get rid of fifty percent of the opportunity, but they do. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, so, you know, she's signed on the dotted line and, um, and I'm just a doctor's wife now, which is fantastic, which is what, <laughs> what my dad always dreamed of for me. Speaking of your dad, he was kind of the highlight of, of, of your wedding when he just pulled out that speech. Yeah, so for, for, for people that don't know, which, again, is all of you, um, <laughs> my, um, my wife's Indonesian and um, after six years of being with her, I had learned zero Indonesian. Ooh. And um, during the wedding speech... My fa- for father of the husband, father of the, um, Brian, yeah, father of the husband, husband yeah, yep. um, had to remember which role I was playing for. But <laughs> father of the husband, um, yeah, gets up and, and does a speech in perfect Bahasa in Perfect, Asia, perfect. like for no. five or seven minutes. Yeah, and I'm just sitting there like you would do this. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> horrifying. Yeah. Well, you completely of, showed you up. Absolutely, and and even before the night before, I said, "Now you're not going to do anything stupid like um, speaking Indonesian." No, no, and they boom straight into it. Oh, Mate, it was perfect. My God, you had half of the audience with their mouths open, <laughs> Marcus aside, <laughs> and then the other side smiling, just like unbelievable. It was. Perfect. They were so impressed. Oh, mate. Um, it was much, impressive. Much more impressed with my father than they are with me. <laughs> <laughs> Which, probably fair enough uh, when, when we think about it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that was a great night. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Oh, my goodness. So, so since then, you'll be um, all pleased to learn that I have been taking Indonesian lessons for two years. And... Well, Salamak Siang. Uh, Teramakasi. <laughs> Tiramisu. <laughs> Tiramisu. <laughs> bintang. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I've got my bintang tattoos on both legs and the Southern nice. Cross across my chest. <laughs> we won't whip that out for the video viewers over here. <laughs> nice. Indecency laws in Sydney. <laughs> Mate, I, I didn't know that you were an Alabamian. Is, is that the right term? And that, that explains the I, baseball I, aficionado. I think, I think the official term is redneck. Um, <laughs> hillbilly is also often used. But no, I mean, honestly, like um, my mom's side of the family is wonderful. We just visited them. Um, you know, great people. We, we have a fantastic time down, down in Alabama. But yeah, I was... Wow. Um, Good food, right? Good food. Yeah, so southern fried chicken, southern fried steak. Deep fried pickles, you know, I mean, you name it, it's just deep fried. So, whoa, man. And so, uh, okay, all right. Well, what's going on with this uh, um, mortgage business then? How's it going? Is it doing better than the uh, the previous iteration? Well, it is because I didn't name it after Lord of the Rings, so <laughs> that was that was the key. So, anyone's wanting to start a practice out there, you can niche, but not too hard. <laughs> so, if you niche down to like philanthropists that are also interested in cats, yeah, you're gonna have like two clients. Yeah, and yes, they'll be great clients because you get along with them, but um. Yeah, it's just not something you want to niche too far into. (laughs) On the broking thing, how does it feel to be on the guest side of a podcast? Because you have your own podcast. I do, yeah. So it's Cat Fancy Weekly. And um, (laughs) 
We have many exciting guests. Um, and we're sponsored by Cat Hair Removalists. Um, no, so being a guest, I mean, this is this is far more professional than anything that we would do. Well, how, um, do, you, how, do, you, how do you do your podcast? So we do our podcast out of a, um, out of a bathroom um, <laughs> because it's just softer walls and whatever. Right. That's what I've been told. So, um, you no, I mean stadium sound. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> like the echo. We like it to be like a performance It's piece. grand. Yeah. Um, no, we, I mean, we do ours out of a serviced office in the city. So I, I run the business out of a, a serviced office. I get a few hours a, a week of um, meeting room space. And mm-hmm. because most mortgage broking meetings happen in people's homes, um, I don't need the meeting room space during the day. So we use that as the, the location for our podcasts. Where, where's most of your business coming from? I would say it's a variety of sources. So we get a lot of referral business off mortgage broking, more than I ever got with planning. Um, so I would say that of every client that we see in terms of mortgage broking, we're getting, um, yeah, you know, one to two referrals from that. Really? And that's in the first six months. Wow. Whoa. Um, whereas for planning, I, I have had off and on, but I've never had it sustainable like this is. Yeah. Right. So we get that. Um I get general inquiries. I've had inquiries from um, even even things like bank websites. So a lot of the um, the players that aren't say Commonwealth Bank, uh, their smaller players have list of brokers in your area. Um, right. So we do get some calls through that. Yeah, wow. And the website as well. Uh, we get a few through the website. Um, we've gone some. Uh, I've gone a couple through the podcast as well. Yeah. Um, but not. Yeah, nothing to the level of the referral business that we're getting from existing clients. I'm keen to sort of talk to you about the podcast a little if I can, because um, I imagine, you know, especially a lot of XY are keen on, you know, doing something like that and it's the business going to clients rather than this podcast business to business a little yeah. different. You know, what what kind of drove doing that and how'd you go about it and what it cost and is it a waste of time or do you love it? I think it's a, I think it, there's, um, for the B2C side, so it certainly is not, um, is not to a level that you want to spend thousands of dollars um, in terms of, you know, studio and mics and so forth. So our total setup, um, we're now 25 episodes in. I think our total setup and cost has been about two grand. That's nothing. But that includes, um, that includes the meeting room space, that includes the editing, that includes... Um, the intro, the outro, that includes um, transcriptions via Rev.com. Whoa. Um, that includes... Is that for SEO, the uh, transcriptions? That's the idea eventually, although we haven't really focused on that at the moment. Uh-huh. So, um, And all the hosting for like uh, SoundCloud and um, Libsyn and mm. everything else. And plus all the equipment. So low barrier to entry. Pretty low barrier to entry, and that's for two people. So if you yeah. have... One person, you're just inter- interviewing people over Skype or, or similar. It'll be even less because I think the the most expensive thing was the um, the mixer to have two mics going at once. Yeah, right. Which we had no idea until the day before we started doing our first one. <laughs> so I think it was a, a four fifty nine p.m. on Monday that I was driving to a to a local um, sound and DJ shop and say, I don't know what I'm doing. Can and I get 10 turn, 10 turn tables? I need, ten, <laughs> I need 10 of your coolest turntables, <laughs> mister. Yeah. This is Marcus O'Reilly's <laughs> all the time. <laughs> uh, it's a wonder why our video, our listener numbers aren't big. <laughs> yeah, so, so we, um, so yeah, we've been doing that for, um, I think we're up to, to month four now. So we knock out one a week um, awesome. and we try and do that in two. Uh, so we try and always have two or three up our sleeve. Yeah. And does it take up much of your time beyond the actual recording? My time personally, no. Um, so my our process is we record. So we record on Monday morning. Um, as soon as that's over, I send the MP3 file off to an editor I send the MP3 off to Rev.com. Uh, within 24 hours, I get the edited version and the transcription back. I do maybe 40 minutes worth of show notes where I go through the transcription, make sure that it reads properly, and I put in the, um, I guess, the relevant show notes, and then go to the editor and say, yeah, it's fine to go push it live on Wednesday. Wow. 
So easy. All in all, and especially if you're interviewing guests, if you are thinking of starting a podcast, I think things like interviewing guests like you guys are doing, so much better because you don't have to prepare as much. Yeah, yeah. You just make it make it happen. There is basically no preparation. This is what this is the big thing about audio on demand is that more people can listen than can read, right? Everyone except for deaf people can listen. Yeah. And 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 most people can read, but essentially it's unlimited. It's so easy. There's no preparation time, there's no planning. You don't have to sit in front of a computer and and having written a book my God, anything to avoid writing another blog in my lifetime, yeah. I'll definitely was, do. Yeah, and, and to pick up on your point, Clint, I would say that um, I hate writing blogs. Mm. Absolutely hate them. For the advisors out there that um, that love doing it, bless you because it's not me. <laughs> um, but I was finding that um, with, a lic- with one of the licensees that I was with in, in prior years, um, they wanted to review and edit everything that went on that website. So by the time I wrote it, it went to, um, it went to, uh, not audit, but it went vetting? to, it went for vetting to make sure that I hadn't instructed people to buy Bitcoin or, or any, you know. It, that would have been good advice yeah, way back when. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> he probably had more clients. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Truly horrible what people have invested in. Um, but, Really, after it got watered down so much, and then there's a huge general disclaimer after it, like it Soul got to the destroyed. point where it was too much, yeah. too much time, too much, much effort. Yeah, yeah. And I was looking at the stats of number of people that would read it, and it wasn't worth the time spent. So yeah, and and people are forgiving if you say something wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you if yeah. you're doing a podcast and you say something a bit clumsy, you say it's, it's only bit, my mo- oh, okay, it's sure. only my mother listening. Like <laughs> she doesn't, you know, she's very nice. So is that, is that kind of is that what you're trying to do? Is you're trying to get people to listen, or is it trying to meet people, or just trying to have a catalog of people to get to know who you are? I I think for you know for for Michelle and myself who are doing the um doing the podcast, we we've really done it as a well. Our goal was to provide property advice that was without the sell. So I listened to a number of podcasts over, over the last few years, and I've listened to a number of speakers, and I've gone to presentations, and there's always a hard sell somewhere. It's always either, you know, off-the-plan developments, or it's always, you know, get them into a seminar so that you can get them onto onto the Off-the-plan developments. Off-the-plan <laughs> developments, as it always ends up being. So, so we wanted to provide, I guess, basic facts, basic, um, informational type advice for people that were buying their first home or looking to buy their first home in, in the year ahead. What's the name of the podcast? Oh, it's uh, Sydney Property Insider. Sydney Property Insider. Awesome. And one of the cool things, and maybe for you to talk through, is the uh, the suburb profiles. Yeah, so the suburb profiles have been one of our, um, I guess, one of our most popular. Certainly when I look at the stats, um, we will do an entire episode where we just base it on, so for example, uh, Merrickville, where, we're, where we'll talk about, you know, the local schools, the school zonings, the, the history cafes, as well. That was histories. a really cool one, the Merrickville one. Yeah, so um, it's it's a way of people that, like, you know, from from my wife and myself, we didn't ever consider like Merrickville when we first started looking for a home, um, but once we started looking, you know, that was a nice suburb, but we really didn't know that much about it, so. I guess having a 20-minute episode that also has some links to various local sites so people can have a, you know, ha- have a further read, go to a local cafe one Saturday morning, they get to f- know the suburb a bit more yeah. than just seeing it on domain.com.au. That's cool, man. Yeah, it's super cool. It's just like, uh, it's just helpful information about the, the suburb. Awesome. Well, uh, tell, us, tell us something interesting. No pressure. About what? <laughs> about Marrickville, about uh... about Marrickville. Oh, it it used to be part of a, a huge estate that was eventually split up into into various packages, right. um, and it does have a, a very vibrant community. But it also has one of the most um, dense. Uh, it has one of the highest number of uh, liquor app- liquor applications in the past two years. I understand because when you initially started, your point was. It has a very vibrant community. I wasn't quite sure what that meant until you completed with the conclusion of 
because of the most amount of liquor licenses. Right. Oh, right. <laughs> so 2 a.m. and it's just outside those lockout law um, yeah. zoning. So, yeah, it's it's quite nice. My fa- what my favourite bar in Sydney is in Marrickville. What's that? Lazy Bones. Don't know it. It's, no, don't it's, know you, it. you walk down um, Illawarra Road, I think it is, in Marrickville. And it's, it's really unsuspecting. You walk up the stairs... And you, it's just this big floor of uh, like Chesterfield lounges, deep, rich curtains. It's beautiful. And it's this jazz club. And it's this what? old dude who will stay open much more later than he's allowed to and be really generous with his with the drinks and all that stuff. He just loves the music. Whoa. Super, super cool. What's it called? Lazy Bones. Lazy Bones. Yeah. Yeah, How much man. of a referral fee do you get for this? <laughs> Enough. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, that's a, he is that's the only com dot au, and uh, please use the code Ray yeah. for the door. <laughs> yeah. Ray. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I mean, maybe for those listeners that are thinking of, I guess, setting up a podcast, other things to think about are, um, you know, getting a list of things that you want to talk about, especially if you're doing it as an advisor. So, I think is. As advisors, which I imagine most listeners most listeners yep. are, um, you know, I'd probably still check with the licensee to see what their requirements are. I know I did for um, for the podcast we do, and that's as a mortgage broker. So I still check with the licensee to see what I could and could not say. Um, and I would also put a general disclaimer on show notes, transcripts, anything. You 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 guys know what you need to do. Well, you you your on the uh, more diligent end of legalities. It's because your dad's a lawyer or, 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 or something, right? No, dad's unemployed. <laughs> I believe we call that retired. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he's, spending, he's, he's spending the kids' inheritance. So um, <laughs> on, on, on Indonesian lessons. <laughs> yeah. On Indonesian lessons, which certainly helpful in, um, in making his son look bad. Um, yeah, I, I just, I always think of things, and this goes back to, to my story as advisor, I always think of things of how do I, you know, what happens when everything goes down and I end up standing in court? Mm. And it hasn't happened yet, touch wood. Um, and, you know, I don't think that we've ever done anything that would be seen as less than, whoa, um, less than, you know, the right way of doing things. But I always think of, you know, if all of these th- things go wrong, um what do I have to fall back on in terms of like the disclaimers in terms of things that, you know, things that I've said, things that I've documented, things that I've got on file. Yeah. Speaking, speaking about things going wrong, AMP, uh, just notified 300 advisors. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah. That, uh, that, that they've done something wrong and they need to potentially find a new home. Who's doing really? something? As in the advisors mm, or the, new? the licensee? Yeah, yeah. Really new. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, so as 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 an as a, a follow on from Dover, where um, I you know, no no one knows h- how many of so called the bad apples were in Dover. I think to 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 paint that whole license <coughs> as 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 full of bad advisors was appalling. Yeah. Um. And and to 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 be forced to to shut up shop, I think was horrible. And and I'd love over the next couple of months, it'd be good to really chase up some of those advisors and see where they ended up and how yeah, process, what that process was like. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I, I fear it's, it's going to continue to happen. And, and three hundred uh, AMP advisors were just um, notified. Mm. So yeah, what does that, that mean, that though? Is is new, right? that, that's that's the licensee <clears throat> saying they've done something wrong, or the uh, the three hundred advisors saying they've done something wrong. No, it's it's the licensee saying to these three hundred advisors that they're, and they're shutting up wrong. shop. Well, uh, let let's see, because okay, it, well. it, very new information, so I'm not quite sure how it, how it's going to roll out. But um, the reason I bring this up is you, you went through a couple of dealer groups, right? I did, yes. And so, what's your experience? So, like? so my experience is um, when you start when you start with the dealer group or start with a licensee, um, do your homework on that licensee in both talking to the people that are uh, from the licensee themselves, and then speak to the advisors that are actually in that licensee or that are ARs. So, um, yes, when I started the business, I was with a different licensee. After about six weeks, I realized that it wasn't the right fit for me because six weeks yeah, yeah wow. I, I ended up being there for about four months because i wanted to check and find you know the right home for longer term 
But I would say after the first six weeks of being there, I I saw things that I wasn't, you know, it, it just wasn't the licensee for me. They weren't doing anything wrong. It just things that I would send up for either vetting and the questions I would get back just didn't make sense to me. And I'm very simple. So um, I, I started looking elsewhere. And um, yeah, so we, again, I, don't, I very... I have a few existing clients, but we're not taking on new clients at this stage. But the licensee I'm with, um, which is Synchron, I, you know, I, I certainly agree with their findings. Whenever they've done audit, it's um, it's come back completely clean. But it's the the information they've provided about. Okay, so here on this page, you might want to add two sentences because of this reason. It's the because of this reason that I find really helpful. Not just you need to do this. It's the reason we're doing this is because this will assist when your clients read the statement of advice. And to me, that's that's much more the Practical. helpful part yeah, because yeah. it's not just a prescriptive, you need to do these 34 things. It's let's have a look. Let's make sure that the story makes sense from client came in to see you for this, client walked out, and they received this, what they had asked for. Um, so, so yeah, I, I'm very happy with the license I'm with now. Synchro cool with the podcast? Well, I don't do as an advisor, so uh-huh. um, so I haven't thought through this one. But again, for anyone listening out there, I'm I'm just a, a I'm just a mortgage broker just trying to get by every day. <laughs> <laughs> just memeing cat cats. Just cat. Ma- yes, just just cat memes. How is so Boots, it. by the way? Boots, our ragdoll. He's um he's six. We have a we have a one and a half year old dog. So beautiful dog. Yeah. So she's horrible, but um, <laughs> she just tears her way through anything. Um, it's this big poodle. Yeah, she's a lab- oh, lab- like she's a labrador. Labrador. Yeah. Um, okay, she's so. not this big, mate. I like for those listening. Clayton just put it up to his head. No, she's not six <laughs> feet tall. She's just a labrador. Uh, uh, but why would you get <laughs> Clayton? You're not married yet, mate. <laughs> Correct. When you get married, you'll understand <laughs> that you don't have a say in many things anymore. And you should just remember, yes, dear, is or whatever you want is always the best I was best wondering answer. what that tattoo was on your wrist. <laughs> yeah, it was yes, dear, on the left and whatever you want on the right. <laughs> yeah, Clayton's actually uh, getting married next month in Finland. That's right. That's yeah. what we like to hear. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. One more, one more to the grave. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, what do you, what do you kind of, what do you kind of see as like the tomorrow for uh, mortgage broking? Because you know, obviously, there's a lot of changes going on in fit services. Yeah. I think, I think mortgage broking will certainly have changes as well. Um, I do feel that there's a slight difference from the way that, from the way that it's viewed compared to the way that planners are viewed. Um, and I, I'm certainly not the expert in this, but when I, when I speak to people that are not in financial services about planning versus mortgage broking, they totally understand how a mortgage broker brings value. Planners still have a bit of that, um, sadly, that negative belief around them. Right. So it's interesting the feedback I've gotten when I've told when I've presented myself in the last, I guess, couple of years as a mortgage broker versus a financial planner. Yeah. Um, so mortgage broking, there's always a conversation that leads from it. Planning, it's oh you're a planner, and that's where the con- the conversation <laughs> ends. And I, I'm totally saying that that could just be me, but um, I know of some others that do both. And again, that's been their feedback as well. What What do you uh, think about? Do you think there's any conflicts in uh, mortgage commissions? Okay. Um, I just don't know. I, I personally, I don't, even though I've never done a mortgage, yep. I don't think there's a conflict simply because the decisions are being made by the client independent of the mortgage broker. Sure, there, there's a pre-approval, right? But mm-hmm. but technically, even that, the mortgage, the, the mortgage broker is simply just executing executing what the what what the reality is right and so people are going i i i disagree with the concept of getting a pre-approval finding out what your maximum is and then trying to find a house to fit that like i disagree with that but but we don't live in a society where um where you can't do that so of course that's what people are going to do um with that said 
the mortgage broker is simply just executing what's being asked of them. And then they're simply executing the mortgage once the property has been purchased. So I don't see a conflict. Do you? I, I think there, I think there, there, there is to um, to a slight, slightly more degree than what you're presenting it as, which is that um, big brokerages. So if you were an advisor and you were working for an AMP of the world that has, or, so in mortgage broking, let's say Aussie or Mortgage Choice or someone like that, and that's not the best model because it's um, to explain because it's a franchise model. But if you have, if you're writing a hundred million dollars worth of business or a hundred million dollars worth of loan, and all of that is going to one individual bank, that bank may pay that broker slightly more than they would if. Understood. If I came in and said, this is my first loan, putting with Bank A. Right. So by that token, yeah, I, I, I probably would like to see it be an even playing course across the field so that when you volume come to Volume bonuses. You're yeah, talking volume about volume bonuses. bonuses. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so in, the, in the world of planning years ago before I go involved, those certainly existed and, yes. and, and so forth. I yes. think those will go eventually. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, cool. I didn't you know that. You can't actually switch off commission or load, can you? No, not... Super really, weird. yeah. So, there, so there's a way that you could rebate it, but it's almost it'd be like to, it'd be like tooth and nail trying to get that done because it comes to you as one payment each month. So you'd have to separate it down to the dollars and cent and rebate it, and it's just not a model that's currently really rolled out by a lot of people. Yeah. I know a couple of uh, brokers that do it, um, but I don't know many. Yeah. So I, I think, um, and to your point about. Um, uh, to your point, really about you know how much people uh, people going to a broker and just executing, I think it's a little more than that. So if I think about through sort of the last few clients that I've seen, they've come to me with needs, sort of like they would as an advisor. They come to you with needs, and you find a few solutions. Um, I do it a bit differently than other brokers. I go back to them with three options and say, based on what you've told me and present almost a statement of advice, for lack of a better term, I provide sort of a 20 page document that goes, okay, so Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you've come to me, you want um, to buy your first home, you want principal and interest, you're worried about interest rates, but you also want the flexibility to pay down your loan when you have extra money come through. As a result, here are three options. This is what the cost would be. These are what the benefits are. These are what each um, feature, each bank has this feature. Yeah, right. Um, which one sounds best to you? And they say, well, well, I don't know. You're the you're the expert. You tell me. And I say, well, based on what your needs are, this will cost you this, this will cost you that, and this will cost you X. This is the cheapest, but also might not have the right features, so I'd be going with the middle of the range. Um, and they say yes to that, and then we put the application through. So Fantastic, man. I, I'd say it's a bit more than... I, I've never had someone come to me and say, I want a bank... Bank of uh, I want a Bank West loan, um, do it for me. It's it's a lot more like I don't actually know what I want, um, but I want but Rams. I, but I want Rams. <laughs> but I don't know what I want. But I walked into a CBA branch and they're doing three point six eight. Can you yeah. beat that? Right. Right. Um, very and, rarely. And is that is that where when you say you get referrals? Is that you trying to compete with price? No, nah, I I haven't had it yet on price. Really? Yeah. So I don't. I'm not about going for the cheap cheapest option. It's about what the right option is. Now, it still has to be competitive, um, but if it's 0.04% more and includes an offset account yeah, and the clients have 0.04. 50... Yeah, I guess so four basis points. Yeah, different. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, so, I meant people coming to you asking, oh, we've got this load. Could you do it cheaper? Um, we get some refund. So certainly I've had some That's where they've called had... called refi... Uh, refinancing, like man. Experts in their field across the table. <laughs> from now, let me write that down. Yeah. Re Refi. Um, Refi. So we've had some where they've gone into a branch three years ago, got an, an interest-only loan for their, ho- for their house or for their home loan, um, and that interest-only period has rolled off and they've gone back to what the full variable rate is. Right. So they say, we were paying 4.1, now we're paying 5.3. Yeah. Why is that? Mm. And I know that we could get that at 3.7 or 3.8. Is that what people are paying? Yeah. Well, it depends. And a lot wow. of people don't open their bills. Yeah. Like, 
you know, they just have the money come into their yeah, yeah. checking account or they come into the savings account or into their home loan offset account and it just goes off Seri- once a month. Serious yeah. question. How many people walk in and say... I'm Had a Lord it. of the Rings fan. No. <laughs> I am interested in buying the Shire. No one, no one has ever done. No, that. no, 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 no. So, uh, what about this? Um, hey, Marcus, I've got equity. How many jet skis can I get? I haven't had any of those clients. You haven't those. had a jet. No. Yeah, you haven't had people want to pull out anyone, the equity for jet skis. Not for jet skis. Oh, no. To me, that I've had. I, I've, I just I've would had love a, for someone to walk in and be like. Hovercrafts, <laughs> yes. <laughs> to go shoot gators. <laughs> now I've had I've had people um, that have wanted um, to take money out for a holiday or for renovations or things, but not for anything like a jet ski. Sadly, a superfluous I, I'm not getting the right clients. Obviously, is there is there a revenue thing in that for as a broker? If someone knocks on the door saying I need fifty grand because I want to do something, does that create an opportunity for you commercially? Um, well, then it's a refi. <laughs> is, is it though? It's a refi. So, I swear that's so, a refi. So there are examples where, so I'll give you an example. When you do a, f- um, it, it's very similar. If you think about insurance, the way that, you know, we may have done insurance in the past. I haven't done one in a year now, so I couldn't tell what it's like at this point. Um, but in the past where you had an existing client that had fully underwritten on standard terms of 500 grand of life cover, and they've come back saying they wanted to take it to six hundred grand. You right. had to do a full new application for that twenty three dollars or something that you were going to generate, and you did it without cost because it's the right thing to do. Yeah, but commercially it doesn't make sense. Gotcha. We still get that through broking because right. people might want ten grand out or twenty grand out, but it's about the overall relationship. You don't say no to people yeah. because it doesn't make sense sure. to you. So you have to wear some of those losses uh-huh. on the basis of, okay, I'm, I'm doing this, but they know that I'm here when they buy their first investment property. Interest only, redraw facility. Gotcha. Nice. <laughs> With two jet skis. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> and cat memes. Um, all right, mate. Well, it was quite, kind of interesting because we, we had someone drop out last minute. And then and I, you knew that I had nothing to do with my time. <laughs> and that's why Ray called me and said, Mark, I, I know you've got nothing to do. And I went, that's right, I don't. Um, I'll come in for a beer. I'll come in. I mean, there was there was beer. I got to see a professional well, set up. And we'll this qualify that properly. Marcus called me and said, hey, mate, I, uh, I just finished a PD session. Would you, do you want to grab a beer? And I was like, well, as long as there's a microphone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we did it. And we Wait, got there. We got there. It's worked out fantastically well. Um, theoretically, if someone wanted to reach out to... to... They don't. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. No one wants to follow our cat meme um, Twitter handle. Um, but if they want to listen to Sydney Property Insider podcasts, yeah. um, you can you can certainly do so. Find it on where all good podcasts are available, including um, the not-so-good ones like ours. Um <laughs> Uh, we're still in our early days. We'll get there. And Brighter Finance? And Brighter Finance is brighterfinance.com.au. Awesome. Yeah. Easy and peasy. Mortal Wealth Management, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we shut the website down, so there is no <laughs> Mortal Wealth. So stop looking for it, everyone. <laughs> very good. Well, thank you very much for coming on, mate. No Appreciate worries. It. Thanks, man. Okay. Cheers.